Testing, 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 testing. Okay, guys, Rob from Monolators Union here. Today, because I'm still the one armed bandit, or well, I have to hold my phone, um, what we're going to do here is just some kit reviews of ones I've already built. Um, you guys have seen photos of them, so now I'm going to show them to you in real life. This is the Trumpeter 124 scale Stuka 87G2. Uh, not gonna lie, this is an awesome kit. Super fun to build. It is big though. Here we go, I'll give you a little perspective here. Sorry about my finger, it's big. So we'll start at the nose. The nose is masked and painted by myself. I painted it actually green first and then masked off the green and did the white. Took a few coats, but that's how I did that. And it came out pretty nice. Spiral is good. Also, you can see some weathering on there. A little bit chipping on the front. I'm trying to keep my weathering more subtle now because I feel like it, uh, you know, it works to our advantage. You don't want it to be too harsh. Now, granted, this isn't the best light. Now you can see exhaust. There's a radiator underneath. It's all done with washes. The paint job itself was done all with Tinea paints pre-shading and modeling underneath. And then a few little tricky stuff on top. Um, the decals should probably be weathered a little bit more, but I feel like I got the paint pretty nice. There's the other wing. These big decals were a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, I messed up the ones on the bottom and I ended up painting them myself and they look friggin' amazing. So you will see that soon enough. I am missing the antenna wire. Um, just afraid when I transport it, it's going to get broken. So that's why I haven't added it. This is another mystery piece when it comes to this kit. What is this? This is a range finding antenna. It's supposed to be gray. I painted mine black, but I didn't realize that until later. But it's supposed to be gray, but that's what that is. Everybody wonders what it is. The way that I got that was by using a piece of photo etch from a command tank antenna from World War II. I glued it on there and then I sprayed it and that's what I got. I did do slight weathering along, you know, all the leading edges. I got a pretty decent amount of color modulation in there. Let's not look at that. Yeah, that one, that one causes problems. Okay, so we're gonna go to the gunner's compartment here. There's a gunner's compartment. This one slides, well, I can slide it right off, which is what I'm going to do because I'm going to have to flip the thing over. Too bad you can't see everything that's in there. Maybe you can see. There you go. Everything is nicely highlighted and weathered. Now we can get in the cockpit. Here's the radio antenna. Now we're getting the cockpit. I will remove this as well. I'm gonna put these two frames over here. And we'll see what we can see inside the cockpit. The lighting is not the best, I understand. There's the shifter, or the stick, sorry. Here's the seat.
feel like it looks still pretty realistic. I'm quite happy. Um, uh, with these trumpeter kits, I usually do deepen all the panel lines just so the wash sticks better. The majority of them anyways. Here you can see that stretch skin type effect. We can go back to the engine. It's a little bit dirty. Um, with this kit, you only have the choice whether to display it with the engine open or closed. Uh, there is no in between unless you want to do a lot of scratch building. Here we go from the top. Zoom that out. There we go. Here we go from the top. The yellow stripe was painted by me as well. That's on a deco. I actually got away from decals as much as I could on this kit. There you can see the pedals nice. I, too bad I can't show you the instrument panel. I'm gonna try. I don't wanna break it though. This bitch is big. There we go. Oh, now you can see it. This is built straight out of the box. Really nice kit. Um, obviously the glass work took a really long time to mask off. And yeah, we can go back to that just for a second. That's a lot of masking work. Including protecting things from the inside so that the paint doesn't get in there. So yeah. All right, so now what we're gonna do, oh, sorry. Now what we're gonna do is uh, flip this thing over and I'm gonna use this box over here. I pre-tested this, so hopefully it doesn't screw me up because I got this big antenna on here. I can't just le lean it over. So I'm gonna flip it over now. There you go. You can see how big this thing is. It's massive. Hold on, my box fell over, damn it. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna settle down. Here we go. She's good. The big giant crosses on the bottom. I had I screwed up the decals and I had to mask them and paint them myself. Um, once I was done with it, I felt like they came out extremely nice, especially after the weathering. All the weathering was done with Tamiya products washes and most of the modeling and everything was all done pre-shading style. Like I said, I did rescribe a lot of this just to make it more prominent. Obviously I didn't do uh, the rivets because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I was just trying to make it look like, you know, it's a tank buster. So it swooped down, blew shit up. So that's why I made the bottom as dirty as it was, but still trying to keep it clean. It's a fine line of, with weathering, you know, and I'm always playing with it. I'm not the best at it either, but you know, I, I am finding out, you know, the tail that less is more, it's true. If you look down inside here, I don't know if you know if you can see it, but oh, we can't see it. There's actual, intakes, fins in there. So yeah, I'll show you the bottom of the engine because it was inverted. So it could actually dive. Here's the bottom of the engine. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it back over now. Here we go again. Massive. So there we go. Here are the 37 millimeter cannons. Actually, I forgot to show you that. I drilled out all these holes. I think there's eight rows of eight, so that's a lot of holes. And then here's the magazines. 
Uh, Trumpeter did make a mistake here. They're not supposed to be handed. They should be both the same. They just clamped onto the bottom of the plane. Um, the bombs, I'm not sure if totally accurate, but I just needed to put something in there because they already previously drilled the holes as per the instructions. The weathering on the wheels and stuff was done just using, um, to me, a dark brown panel liner as my fixer. So I just rub the whole tire, cover it in light sienna, wait for it to dry, brush it off. That's what you get. Same as over here. This is where the big bomb would go. Um, and here's a little window that they can look through from the bottom. Interesting, I never knew that until I built this thing. The big bomb obviously couldn't carry them with the, uh, the big 37 millimeters. And then back into the radi radiator. There you go. So there you go guys. I hope it looks as good to you in person as the photos you've seen. And if you have any questions about how I did anything, please feel free to message me and let me know. Um, we are also on Facebook, same group, name, Model Makers Union. Feel free to join us and you can see amazing stuff, amazing people, and uh, camaraderie like you've never seen. Okay, thank you and have a good night. Bye.